Hi, Lauren. How are you? Good. How are you today? Great. Great. Thanks so much for being here. I know you've been really busy, but thank you so much yes. for taking the time today. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for being patient. I know it's been busier than ever. I think most people think that everyone is just sitting at home, especially because yeah. sports were gone and they're slowly coming back. But yeah. I swear I've been busier these last couple of months than ever. Mm -hmm. Right. So how are things in the U.S. Um, in general and sports wise? You know, I think in general, I will say they're just OK. Um, I think, unfortunately, a lot of people are at the point where they're they've taken the mindset that they're just over this whole pandemic and this situation. And the reality is that the virus is not over with us. It's not done with us. And so unfortunately, there's a lot of people who've gone back to kind of quote unquote normal life, even though the reality is that we're not in a normal situation. Sure. So I think that's, that that might end up prolonging things, which is unfortunate. Um, and that kind of relates to the sports world too. I think we're starting to see it. You know, the NBA has done an amazing job being in the bubble and it's working. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, as, as we've seen with the MLB, it's not working as well. And I have a client who plays for the St. Louis Cardinals. And it's been very frustrating because it's been weeks since they've been able to play a baseball game because they continue to have players test positive for the virus. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, we'll continue to see that unless things are being done in a bubble type setting. So it's getting better. It certainly is encouraging to be able to watch sports on TV. That's been awesome. But there's still going to be a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think athletes across the board, along with just, uh, you know, everyone in general needs to take responsibility for their health and also for their actions and all of that. Sure. Sure. That's, that's true. And um, yeah, um, are people actually watching the NBA though? I, I was seeing a pod, I was listening to a podcast and they were like, yeah, the NBA is going on, but it doesn't really feel like the NBA. It definitely doesn't feel like it, but the the ratings have been pretty even, maybe only a little bit lower. Uh, I think people thought, and I think the NBA thought that ratings were going to be super high, and they're actually they're they're not higher than they normally would be. So it's normal as if it was you know this this part of the season during a normal setting. Um, but I think you know, that there, I've talked to enough people who say that they'll catch games. It's also been kind of hard because some games will be during the day where mm -hmm. people, I think, are working. Right. So I think that makes it a little, a little bit hard to catch them as well. Sure, sure. So um, how did you get started with sports? Did you, did you play uh, any sport when you were a kid? Yeah, so I actually did gymnastics growing up, and then gymnastics led me to cheerleading, and then I was a cheerleader in college at Purdue University, and so that's where it started, where I was directly connected to the athletes. So at Purdue University, the cheerleaders were part of the athletic department, so we had access to all the same resources that any athlete would, right. from our academic center, you know, to everything that you could imagine, and so that's when it started that I started to see kind of a behind the scenes look of what life as a student athlete looks like. Mm -hmm. And shortly after that, you know, when I got involved then working with the Purdue football team after I graduated college, that's when I started to see firsthand that a lot of athletes get pigeonholed into a situation where all they think about is sports. They're not thinking about their future. They're not thinking about different opportunities and what they need to be doing to prepare themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I developed the passion. And that's really when I decided that I knew that at some point in time, I wanted to pursue a full on career within the sports industry. Sure. Sure. So um, it was straightforward right, right from your college, you directly um, joined, um, you know, the organization in your college the sports organization or um, do you work outside? Yes, yeah, so I did, but I was doing it part-time. So it was only a part-time role and it did not pay a lot of money. So I also had to work jobs on the side. And then I made the decision after doing that for two years 
to relocate to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And in Chicago, I took on a role. Uh, I actually worked as a recruiter at a staffing agency. And um, during that time, I maintained relationships with a lot of the people that I had worked with and known from college who were now playing in the NFL and the NBA. Wow. And I would do projects for them on the side. But my main job, I had a corporate job, a nine to five normal job. And I was doing these projects on the side. And after three years of doing that, I decided to make the leap and then go ahead and start my own agency, which is what I still run now today, almost six years later. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, that's great. I mean, uh, it's it's a huge risk, right? I mean, taking the leave, especially after leaving a corporate job. So, it's it's certainly it's a leap, you know, in two aspects. It's a leap to jump into sports because, you know, sports is certainly a hard industry to break in. Everyone knows it's a male-dominated industry, so trying to break in as a female, and then at the same time leaving the comfort of a corporate job where I had a salary and benefits and all these things and just made the leap to start my own company. I mean, it was not easy. And I'll be very, very honest in saying that it took, it took about three years before we broke even. And it took even a few more months after that, before we actually started to bring in revenue, you know, actual revenue um, and turn a profit. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's hard. I think that's, that's the part people look at me now and say, oh, wow, you run this agency and you work with these big name people. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been almost six years that I've been running this agency. And let me tell you, at more than half of running it has been extremely hard. And there's been a lot of times where I wondered if it was actually going to make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So um, how is it in general, the sports startup um, culture in your area, in, your, in America? I know America, it's big like with startups and everything, but how is it? It's, it's tough. It is very tough because sports is a very tight-knit industry. Even though there are thousands of agents and marketing reps and tons of people to be on kind of the inner circle you could call it it's a very very tight-knit group so it's hard and one of the reasons it's very hard to break in is because you don't gain true credibility until you've actually produced work and worked with big name individuals big name athletes and it's hard to find an athlete who will give you a chance Sure. So if you're coming in as a startup and you don't have a lot of connections, mm -hmm. you're starting from ground zero. And so you have to literally fight and work so hard for little one-off opportunities just to build that credibility. Because every time you meet someone and you tell them you work in sports, they say, oh, wow, what do you do? And then they ask, who do you work with? And unless you're able to list this amazing, impressive, you know, mm -hmm. roster of clients, right they don't really deem you as credible. And so it's hard. It's hard to get to that. And it takes time. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think it's natural for people to be impatient. So people don't want to wait for all of that to, to happen. But that's, that's kind of where it stands. So some people get lucky and, you know, they break in and they have, you know, a referral to someone. Um, and other people, it just takes a lot longer. But it's certainly, it's certainly a process and it's not easy. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when you, especially, you know, you have the associations, then the big companies, the giants like Nike, uh, Adidas and their partners. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's really hard, right? Especially when it comes to branding and a lot of these activities. Absolutely. And there will always be those big giants out there, you know, even on the agency side, mm -hmm. there will always be those bigger companies who have better resources, they have more money, they have more access. And so you are forever going up against them, which is why you have to also figure out what is really going to differentiate me from those groups, because really, they offer everything that an athlete would really need or want mm -hmm. to work with. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. So um, talk to us about branding in sports. What, uh, what fascinated you? Like, I, I'm, it's really interesting, actually, sports and branding. So what fascinated you? 
the most fascinating thing to me is really getting to know athletes as people and getting to know the things that they are interested in and the life events and things that they've been through besides sports. To me, that's so fascinating. When you can meet someone who is looked at as being so famous and they make so much money and they have all these followers on social media Mm -hmm. and you get to know them for who they are as a person and maybe you learn about the struggles that they've been through or you learn about things that they're interested in that no one would have ever guessed. To me, that's fascinating. And that's what I love about what I personally do because I figure out how to take those things and then bring them to life, whether it's through storytelling on social media or it's through brand deals and campaigns that we put together, giving back to charity. I think that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So um, I don't mean to be a devil's advocate or I'm just. Um putting this out there um you know usually before like before the social media age there was this of course athletes are like gods in america it's very similar with cricket in india um but you know before there was this type of aura you know around athletes because everyone i mean athletes and celebrities because we didn't actually know about their life we just looked looked at them as idols so do you think it is a good idea to you know expose you know all, you know all facets of um, the uh, the athlete's life like uh, you know um for me personally i'd prefer you know just assuming things about the athlete you know um but then you see a lot of a lot of these athletes you know posting stuff throughout the day and uh, it actually you know takes away a bit of the mystery element of of it so what do you think is the right way to go about it you know i think i'll actually challenge that a little bit because even though we didn't have social media if you think back and if you watch the michael jordan documentary at all people were fascinated by his life in general you know i mean there was so much more to michael jordan than just the basketball player you know i remember watching one of the episodes where they traveled overseas and people overseas just were so fascinated and wanted to see him and wanted to know what he was doing you know and so i think i think it's always been there i think the whole idea of what is it about these people and what makes them tick i don't think it was at the level that it's at today Mm -hmm. but i do think that it's always been there in some capacity and i think today what is so important is that we let people know who we really are. I think that's it. I think whether you are a professional athlete or you're an everyday person who goes to their job, I think it's very important that we let people know who we are as people and not be known for what we do. It's the same as the fact that I don't want to only be known as someone who is the president and founder of a company or someone who does branding in the world of sports. I want to be known for who I am as a person. So I think we need to allow athletes to do that same thing because if they play in the NBA, being an NBA player is what they do. That's not who they are. So I do think that athletes should continue to show things, whether it's the everyday things that they do, where they're on their social media, showing you what they eat for breakfast or whatever it may be. I think that allows them to show who they truly are as a person. And I think that's what helps people be more understanding in this world is when we strip away the idea of only knowing people for what they do and try to get to know them for who they actually are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Sure. So yeah. Talk to us about personal branding for athletes. So this pretty much covers it, right? Or is there a lot more elements to it? A lot of what we've talked covers it. You know, I just think that um, it's important to figure out what are the things that make them pick and ask them the deep questions. You know, what are your values in life? What is your mission? What is the legacy that you want to leave behind? These are the questions that I ask people before I start working with them as clients. And, you know, I think that's, that's what people need to know. Um, also, you know, it's figuring out how do you leverage your platform to make a difference and leave a legacy? You know, maybe it's 
giving back. Maybe it's that charity aspect. Um, maybe it's a foundation, you know, maybe it's using your voice and the platform that you have to speak out against something. So I think what's important as it relates to the world of branding is that one, take the time to get to know the athletes of people, ask them questions. Don't just assume that you are going to get to know them by what you see on their social media, ask them these deep questions and then put together a strategy that lets them show the world what they're all about. And that's of course, assuming that's what they want to do, you know, because not, not every athlete wants to have a big brand and put themselves out there. Yeah. So I think it's also being able to, make sure that they're comfortable with it. And if they are, then just coming up with the right strategy to do it the right way. Sure. So I have a follow-up question to the one I'm going to ask you right now. Um, mm -hmm. How powerful has social media been for athletes? Yeah, I mean, it's very powerful because you're constantly connected to your fans. You're not only connected to your fans when you're at a game and you're on the court and you're on TV. Yeah. You have 24 seven access to all of these different people. So I think that in itself is extremely powerful. Sure. So um, about this 24 seven access, you know, um, just, you know, looking uh, at it from an athlete's perspective, um, from, uh, I, I'm not sure if you've heard of uh, Man Manchester United, I'm sure everyone has, but, um, mm -hmm. You know, we have players who, you know, are, you know, fool around, you know, they like to dance, they like to play on their PlayStations, right? But what happens is, you know, let's say they have a deal, you know, to upload photos of, uh, of them playing the PlayStation. And then they go ahead and probably lose a match or two on the trot. And then they're seen, you know, probably dancing or, uh, you know, playing the PlayStation. And then you have the fans turn against them. Uh, and they're like, um, why can't you focus on football for once? Uh, you're playing horrendous uh, football or uh, basketball and stop your PlayStation nonsense. So uh, it, it, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, right? It is. I think that it's twofold. I think that one, people are going to be people. I mean, humans are just humans. So you have to tell them like, if, it, it's that's where it's your job to let people know hey we're we're normal humans and yes i need i know i need to work harder i need to do this but i also need an outlet to be able sure. and the reality is there are going to be times when maybe it just doesn't make sense and it's not the best for your brand and image especially if you're in a position where you're catching a lot of negative heat and energy from the media or from the fans mm -hmm. you should be aware of that i think that's where the branding or marketing professional that you work with needs to know what they're doing. I've actually gone as far as I've put into contracts, stipulations that are exactly surrounding this idea. So I've worked with NFL players and I have specifically told brands, if you want a post on a Monday and we lost the game on Sunday, we have the opportunity to push the post out a week or even further. Sure. So I do think that sometimes because if they lost extremely bad and that player specifically is kind of taking the heat or people are blaming the loss on them. Right. Yes, maybe it doesn't make sense if they turn around the next day and they're posting all these fun things. Sure. But again, that's where you have to have stipulations in the contract. And at the end of the day, if you're going to do a deal with a brand and you're going to allow them to use your name, image, and likeness, and you're going to use your own social media platform to promote them, you need to be in control. Sure. So if you want to be in control, just make sure that that's in the contract, but be cognizant of it. You know, we do have to be cognizant of it because the reality is you don't have the big marketing deals unless you're performing on the field or the court. Performance needs to come first. Right. And so if you're not performing, eventually at some point, a lot of brands won't even want to work with you. So it does need to be a focus. Absolutely. Like the game, I always say yeah. the game needs to come first yeah. and you need to focus on that. But then also know that, you know, if you're in brand deals, you should have some sort of say so that you don't feel pressured by the brands to mm -hmm. lose the game and then turn around and have to be posting about something exciting. Sure. Sure. So, um, 
I know you've worked with a lot of uh, professional athletes. Do they get uh, do they get affected by the criticism that they get on social uh, with Twitter and you know Instagram comments and stuff? Do uh, do they actually get affected by it? Some do, yeah. I mean, there's I've worked with some where it's gotten to the point where we have made decisions for them not to even be on social media for a certain amount of time because. You think, I mean, yes, these are very tough and mentally tough individuals, but they're also human once again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you try to encourage them to stay out of the comments. I try to tell them, don't even look at them. Don't worry about it. But sometimes, you know, after they lose the game and they're already feeling bad about themselves, they pick up their phone and you read one comment and then you just keep going. So it does. I personally, you know, I wouldn't say it does for everybody, but I have personally worked with individuals where it has very much affected them and their mental state, and that can then affect their game. And so again, that's where it comes, you know, make sure to be able to put things in place to pull them out of that and ensure that they're not allowing that to affect them. Sure, sure, definitely. Um, okay, so um, what are some of the interesting projects you've worked on? Oh, there have been so many. Uh, one of the really fun projects that we work on is with the Children's Diabetes Foundation. One of my clients who plays for the LA Chargers, um, he's been able to give back. And we decided to get involved with that foundation because he's had family members who suffered and battled diabetes still to this day. And so it's been really fun because he's been able to fly out actually spend time at the children's hospital with the kids playing football. Um, also, he, that same individual is very, very involved with his local Boys and Girls Club. Um, and he started off simply showing up on his days off and volunteering. And then he ended up coaching their flag football team. Mm -hmm. So that's been fun to have him be able to give back. Um, I think some other things was launching Terrell Owens' TO, launching his YouTube channel. That's been a very, very fun project. I think to me, he's one of those people that a lot of people don't know the real T.O. And so I love the fact that he can have a platform where people can get to know him as who he truly is as a person. So that's been fun. And that, that was really the goal behind that. Um, and then we did a really fun project with Destination Cleveland and Miles Garrett. And it was a really cool opportunity for Miles to showcase his dog. His dog, Gohan, was just as much, she's just as big of a star in that campaign as he was. And so that was fun because my passion, as I mentioned earlier, is allowing athletes to be known for what they like to do. And, you know, one of his favorite pastimes is spending time with his dog. So to do a campaign that allowed him to do that, that to me is just, that's, that's how they should all be done. It should be fun to do these kinds of campaigns. Sure, sure, right. Um, what's always intrigued me is when you mentioned the uh, charity, the um, part of the, the campaign, mm -hmm. when you have tie-ups, you know, um, with these organizations, um, does it go well for the athlete to be posting pictures about uh, him doing this charity work? or um, you know, because, you know, some people may uh, think of it as, a, you know, a PR um, activity where they don't really care about the patients or the people. They're just doing it for the, uh, for the PR. So what do you usually, uh, you know, suggest the athletes? You have to tell the story. I think that there should be a story. You should not be volunteering for PR. You just shouldn't. And so for us, what we do whenever, and he doesn't usually post that much. It's actually usually, usually the organization that's posting right. about the things that he's doing. Right. And we make sure, though, that people know why he's doing it. We put things out there either on his social or on the organization's social where he talks about why these kids mean so much to him. And he right. talks about the fact that he was one of those kids a mm -hmm. long time ago. Right. So I think it's important to have a story behind it. If you choose to align with an organization, sure. have a deeper meaning and a deeper passion behind it. And then mm -hmm. tell that story. Sure. Tell people why you're passionate about this cause or this organization. Sure. And allow people to understand because 
if you don't tell them, how are people supposed to know? Right. I think that's where it's super important to just tell it, just build it up um, and make sure that it's done in the right way so that Mm -hmm. it doesn't come across as it being strictly a PR PR Mm -hmm. stunt. But I also know a lot of athletes too who donate tons of money and don't talk about it ever. You never, you would never even know. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what the plan is. If the plan is to bring awareness to this cause and to donate money and have other people donate money, well then leveraging your social media is a great way to do it. Right. If you simply want, you know, just want to be able to discreetly donate money, that's also okay too. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that's, that's actually uh, a very good insight. You know, give them a reason as to why they're doing it instead of just posting a photo with a caption that I, I visited this hospital. You know, give them a reason as to why they did that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So um, in in the attention economy, how do you see the future of branding? You know, I hope it continues the way that it is right now. I really hope that we start to lean more into authentic partnerships. I hope that, you know, as we see what has happened to our world through this pandemic, it's about people. It's about changing people's lives and inspiring people and realizing that at the end of the day, life is short and nothing is guaranteed. And so, you know, just making a point to focus on that. I'm really hoping that that's what we see. I'm hoping that we only see athletes working with brands that they truly believe with and align align with. Um, Then we see more genuine partnerships focused on making an impact in the world or simply just making an impact in that little area where that that athlete is from. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. So, yes, you mentioned that... um, you got into the industry where very few females uh, actually do. It's a male dominated um, industry uh, with sports in America. So in the world, in fact. So how is it like? What was your experience? Yeah, you know, the encouraging thing is that there are certainly a lot more females now and today. However, when I first got started, there were not. And it was very, very few and far between to have women at, you know, different things. And it is, it's very interesting. You know, I think that you have to be aware of it. I think being aware is number one. But then also realizing that there's, you can use it to your advantage. I mean, there also are things that a lot of the athletes that I work with, or let's say I'm pitching to a potential client, a lot of times their mom is part of the decision-making process. And a lot of times the mom feels more comfortable talking to me. And so it just depends, you know, if that's the situation, then lean into that and figure out. Also, you know, women are typically known for being maybe a little bit more compassionate or caring. I mean, it's just standard. That's nothing that is discriminatory against the sports world, but that's just known. And so, you know, that's something too, that sometimes the athletes, you know, they have to put on this front all the time that they're these big macho people. And sometimes it's nice to be able to be able to call someone and just have them say, how are you doing? Like, how are you really doing? Mm-hmm. So I think that's how you use it to your advantage, you know, working with clients. But I think the other thing is, is just, you know, be aware of it, you know, be, be extra professional and don't give anyone any reason not to work with you simply because you're a male or a female, you know, just show up, do the work, work extra hard. Don't expect handouts. Um, you know, don't use it as a way of like, Oh, poor me. You know, there's only guys here, you know, Mm -hmm. just step up and do the work. Like that's why for me, if someone decides to go with me or someone else, I don't make it a gender thing. I don't say, oh, they chose them because they were a guy, even if they did. Because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like, we obviously just weren't a good fit. Our personalities maybe didn't fit. So I think figure out the ways to leverage it to your advantage, but also make sure that you don't use it as a way to to play the victim. Mm -hmm. Um, Just be aware of it, but just over deliver. Go just do everything that you can to the best of your ability. And again, be professional, do the little things, have a great handshake. Like that's one thing I'll always notice is if I shake someone's hand in the industry and say, wow, that's a great handshake. They almost expect 
you know, women to not have something like that. Yeah. So just don't give them any room to try and say, oh, well, she can't do that because she's a female. Mm -hmm. You know, just show up and do, do the work and do it even right. better than anyone else would do it. Right. So uh, we had a women, a women tennis coach um, in one of our podcasts and she was, uh, uh, you know, talking to me about, uh, you know, her having the exact same qualifications as some of the other male coaches. And, but then those male coaches were way more recognized and more, way more respected as compared to her. And uh, she had to really grind and, you know, work really hard. Is it the same, like, how do people perceive you uh, being in this industry when it comes to, you know, sports? I would say it's, I personally don't think it's as difficult um, being on the branding and marketing side as it is for some coaches. Sure. I personally have worked with one of the uh, female MLB coaches, and I know it's been very, very hard for her, much harder than it has been for me. But I think what's important and what I tell her all the time and the same tactic that I used on myself is that just fight harder because fighting harder and having to go through more adversity than a male might have to, it's going to make you stronger. So even though it may take you a little bit longer, whenever you get to that point that it comes to fruition, you're going to have a better story and you're going to inspire more people. And I think that's where it's important to realize like, okay, I'm going through this for a reason. And I'm not just going through this for me. I'm going through this for the hundreds and thousands of women who will come after me. You know, and so of course it's going to be hard. When you blaze a new path, you blaze a new trail, it is going to be hard, whether you're a male or a female. So I think what I've focused on doing is showing up as, again, over delivering, showing up as the best version of myself. I go out and I seek out different opportunities, you know, like even doing things like this, even coming on and talking to you on this podcast, this isn't just about me. This yeah. is also about you giving me a voice and a platform to speak for all the women who want to work in sports and want to do my job. Sure. And I take that very, very seriously. And I think that other women should too. So I think if it's harder and we have to face more adversity, heck yeah, bring it on, like lean into it. Because then when you get to the top, you can look at your male counterparts and say, guess what? You actually had it kind of easy. I was yeah. over here working my butt off and now I got here. You know, and it yeah. feels, something feels better about that to me. So I think lean into it and use it as motivation. Sure, sure. That's uh, very well said. And uh, if you were to give a piece of advice for women entrepreneurs who want to get into the sports industry, what potential do you, you know, see in fact? I think what's important is take a look at yourself, figure out what your motivation is, what is your why in life, what are your values, what is your mission, what is the legacy you want to leave behind. I say this because there are going to be days when it's just hard. When you wake up, you don't want to get out of bed, you don't know where your next paycheck is going to come from. And so I think in those moments, you have to be able to dig deep, very deep. And so before you go into it, know why you're doing this. Don't, mm -hmm. don't move and start a job in sports just because you think it's cool. Because guess sure. what? It's much harder than it often looks. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you take a step back and you challenge yourself to really think about why you want to do this and how you're going to make an impact, that will keep you going on those days when it feels very, very hard. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Great. So, Lauren, talk to us about your company, your boutique brand, sports branding agency. Yes, yes. So, LW Branding is a boutique branding and marketing agency that does specialize in working with professional athletes. You know, we've been able to really carve out our niche um, in terms of the athletes that we've worked with. And, you know, we also do take on, we've worked with amazing influencers and entrepreneurs and doctors and authors that are all stemmed from working with professional athletes. That's where it started. And it really came from a true passion that I had to really help athletes leverage who they are to really build a legacy outside of them being an athlete. I mean, that's really my passion. And I just, I honestly feel 
just so blessed and so lucky to get to do it every single day. And I think what sets us apart from some other people in the industry is obviously number one being boutique. I'm very, very cognizant of the number of clients that we work with. Do not take on every single client. I like to keep our roster small mm -hmm. because I want to be able to be the person that if a client needs something that they can call me, they can get a hold of me. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that sets us apart. And then I think it's also just our strategy approach. I think it's getting to know the athletes as people and almost knowing them better than they know themselves and then knowing how to go to bat for them, knowing how to negotiate the certain contracts and do certain things and always being five steps ahead without them having to ask to do something. So, you know, that's, that's really how I think we've gotten to this point. And then of course, a heck of a lot of hard work has brought us this far too. Wonderful. And uh, any yeah. plans to uh, start the uh, wing in India? You know, hey, if you have any connections, you know, over there, or you have anyone over there that you think would make sense to work with, I am always open to it. You know, I'm very open to whoever the next individual might be to work with. Sure, sure. I'll definitely uh, get them in touch with you if I do know any. And, Great. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, where can people find out about your agency, find out about more about you and your journey? Yeah, great question. So my company's website is www.lwbranding.com. So the company's LW Branding is just lwbranding.com. We're on social media at lwbranding. You can find us on every platform, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And then also, if you want to learn more about me personally, you can go to lauren-walsh.com. There you can find my personal blog, links to all of my personal social media, and that gives you a better understanding of me and my journey, how I've built this agency and just really how I operate my life on a daily basis. Wonderful. So guys, uh, I'll have all the links on the show notes so you can definitely get in touch with her, um, follow her journey. And um, Amazing. yeah, so Lauren, thank you so much for thank taking you. this time out in the middle of the day. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate it. Take care. Okay, thanks.